Hello and welcome to Market Psychology 101, where we look for value in the markets when there's fear and are cautious when there's green. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the stock market as well as some of the magnificent seven stocks. So as far as the stock indicators, we have been up into greed and extreme greed recently on CNN as well as pie vesting. So again, be cautious when there is greed in the markets. There could be some decent pullbacks in the near future as far as crypto also shooting up from fear to greed. Not quite making a new higher high, but we will see that might happen soon. And before we go over to the stock market, just really quick taking a look at crypto. We've been talking about how Bitcoin's been in been in, in, in a descending channel and it really wasn't able to get above it. At least here with the Heikinashi candles, you can see it came right up, tested this trend line as well as the descending channel trend line, the blue line coming down a little bit. So we will see if it comes down, hits support and then breaks through. This could be a big moment for Bitcoin or like it's done before, it could be moving back towards the lower end of the channel. And if it does that, I, in my estimation, I'd say is as long as we consider the former crypto cycles if there was a big pullback i'd say it'd probably be the last one that would be my guess anyways let's move over to the s p 500 so you can see the s p 500 still making new all-time highs here on the heikinashi but it is looking a little bit extended and whenever stocks or cryptos get a little bit extended some of the indicators i like to take a look at are the RSI, the Relative Strength Index, as well as the MACD, that's the Moving Average Convergence Divergence, to see if the moves are losing momentum, if they're losing strength, if we might be seeing things like bearish divergence. And in the opposite, when a move is oversold, I'm looking for bullish divergence too. So at least going over to the weekly, you can clearly see that there is bearish divergence on the RSI. So that means higher prices, but lower trending strength. You can see each peak gets a little lower. That is bearish divergence. Uh, the tricky thing about that, though, is these can take a while to play out. Uh, but as we've seen in the past, this was leading up into the eventual turnover in that, that led to the bottom in 2022 before we were extremely sold off. You can see there's just a little bit of bearish divergence, just three peaks until it rolled over. So we've been going here for a while. If it's going to roll over sometime soon, that wouldn't be surprising, at least on this chart. As far as the VIX is concerned, this is the volatility index. You can see that the VIX is getting a little bit higher, moving on up. And typically, whenever the VIX is 25, 30, 30, I'd like to say, or above, you can start looking for deals in the market. And we should be expecting increased volatility, especially since in election years, we typically have volatility in October. Between these two lines, I don't know if you can see as I scroll to the bottom there, between October to November. So leading up into the election, we tend to see increased volatility. And I really haven't seen that reflected in the markets quite yet, at least not since the yen carry trade where there was a 10% correction recently in August. But overall, right now we're still following this dark green line since the Fed first cut rates. Remember, there's no Fed rate cuts in October unless they were to do an emergency meeting. So in my opinion, what they do in November is gonna be more telling than anything else. But overall, we're really following this dark green line. Post rate cut, we're already in new all-time highs. We had that 10% correction before with the end carry trade. Not to say recession can't be coming in the future, 20, late 25, 26. Uh, but we just haven't seen that yet. And really, part of the reason you, you can tie it to the jobs numbers, unemployment ticked down. So some of the stocks and, and crypto have been ticking up. But also... Historically, when the Fed is cutting low and slow, the market still has a little bit of time left to run before it eventually sells off. So you can see 1998, they cut by 25 basis points, low and slow, they held. And then later, of course, after 2001, when they had to cut hard and fast, 
that's when it was the end and we had a 50% correction. So I know we just had a 50% basis point cut, but don't get too locked in on that 50 number, at least not yet. You know, hindsight will tell us uh, differently in the future, but really, since they're not cutting in October, you can just take a look at the Fed committing to an average of two 25 basis point cuts in September and October. At least that's the way it's looking so far. Any other things we want to get into here? This one is just percent of stocks above the 200 day moving average. If this starts to peak and you can see overall, let's look at the weekly. I think that would be better. You'd see overall as this has been elevated, it it might be due for a little bit of a pullback and we do have this ascending trend line here it could even spike up further um, at the peak of the 2021 bull market when there's stimulus money and record low rates you can see it got up near 90 percent right now clearly see it's at 60. maybe it can get towards 70 if it got closer to 70 that's when i'd be saying you know be more cautious another thing to look for this is shown the um, or, or has preceded recessions in the past and that's the yield curve on inversion typically it's been about a couple of years from the uninversion to the eventual recessions and the bottoms of the market we can zoom out these red vertical lines show where the bottoms of the stock market were and you can clearly see after the uninversion that happened uh, about a year and a half, two years later. So that put us out in the 2026. And that also coincides for all you crypto followers out there, coincides with when the bottoms of the crypto market tend to come in. So 2022, 2018, those were bottoms in the crypto market. This would be lining up for an eventual bottom. So we'll see if that continues to happen again. As I was talking about with unemployment, uh, we did have a tick down recently. Let's zoom in on this bad boy so if all of a sudden unemployment continues to uh, tick down then you'd probably guess that the fed would pause rates for a little bit and maybe even consider raising rates again in the future so it as far as what the fed wants to do they, there's two trains of thought that i've been reading out there one that hyperinflation or more inflation would be easier for the government to handle all the debt that it has that's one side the other side of the token is is that they don't want a reacceleration of inflation or um, multiple inflation spikes like there was in the 70s so if that's true and that's what the fed has been saying they're trying to avoid more so as uh, more inflation then you would assume that they would probably pause if not raise rates um, but the fact that they're cutting right now we'll see what they have what that effect has on inflation if it's going to be become a big deal or not uh, we can even take a look at inflation here real quick before we get into some of the stocks so u.s inflation rate let's just take a look at this right now and you can see it's moving down pretty good uh, towards the uh, magical two percent line so the fed's been obsessed with saying you know two percent is just right as far as inflation how they come up with two percent is the perfect number i don't know um but we, we'll see you can see that's a pretty big uh roll over there one of the things keeping inflation up pretty high is the housing market the housing prices that hasn't quite come down yet so just things to keep in the back of your mind to watch for I, I'll be talking about these things on this channel every week or every other week because it, eventually when these uh, indicators start to really move, when these charts start to really move, that will show us good macroeconomic conditions, whether to take profits, buy, sell, all those sorts of things. So let's get into the Magnificent 7 stocks and NVIDIA, my God, moving up into the 140 range should we take a look at this on the daily let's go on the daily so right at all-time highs you can see it broke that downtrend let's get rid of this here broke this downtrend is starting to move up challenging all-time highs we'll see if it starts to break above and something to consider if we do get into hey well we already are in my opinion but if we get further into an ai bubble kind of like the dot-com bubble in the early 2000s something to consider is market cap and as far as 
what your expected returns would be for Nvidia. So if you're looking at Nvidia right now and you're feeling all hyped up on the news, the, the, the good news, the prices, something to consider is that it wasn't long ago, this was around a $350 billion market cap. That was just in uh, late 2022. So this thing's already gone over uh, 10, 11, I think even 12x. So how much further can this go? If you were to invest $1,000 in NVIDIA right now to double your money, you would want this to be worth $6.84 trillion. That's most likely not going to happen. Maybe somewhere between four to five, uh, if things really start to cook at the peak of what, what I would say would be a, a massive bubble. But just, I, I would say, tame your expectations. I... I try to answer the essential question in all of my videos, is now a good time to buy? I do not buy stocks when they are at all time highs. That's why I've on the moving averages. And as I said in my crypto video yesterday, whatever stocks, cryptos you watch, just it, pick out your handful that you've done your research on, that you've committed to, you've looked at the uh, balance sheet, all those things, and just take a few minutes to look at them every week. If you just take five minutes every single week to take a look at your five to 10 stocks, you will eventually find when it gets to these deals on the moving averages or the FIB. So right now, price is extended, maybe it's gonna break through to new all-time highs. Microsoft, you can see right here, if you like Microsoft, we were talking about, I was at the 200 day moving average. So not a bad area for Microsoft, pretty much the best stock in the world or has been for a while so anytime microsoft is at or below the 50 week moving average tends to be a really good opportunity to buy i think last time we talked about that it's an average of once every two years you can see how long it went there without even really getting under the 50 too many times so the fact microsoft is hitting the 50 a couple more times maybe it's showing weakness like we were seeing back in uh, 2021, 22. So maybe stocks are getting ready to roll over sooner than later. I don't know. But overall, in the long term, when Microsoft is at or below the 50, tends to be a better value time to buy if you're waiting for the recession and uh, lower prices. Something to consider is even these top stocks can correct between 30 to 60 percent from their top. So if something like Microsoft were to correct 30 percent, you're talking about it losing 100 points or let's say even this is 50 percent. It put us in line with the bottom at 22. Not saying that is going to happen, but do know if you are a believer in a recession coming sometime 25, 26, then you would be looking for that percentage of a move. Does not mean we can't go a lot higher though. Apple been making moves. Looks like it's getting into, yeah, looks like it broke into new all-time high territory. So Apple, another one, great stock, but I would not be buying it now. We were talking about Apple not long ago. This is in April. We were saying, just like Microsoft, when Apple is at or below the 100-week moving average, we went back in time and showed that's an event that happens once every two years. And so uh, you can also see the RSI low on strength there. So he said, hey, maybe it could go lower, but now would be a decent dollar cost average opportunity. Forgive me, hydrating. And a good dollar cost average opportunity. And would you look at that? Apple has gone up quite a bit since. So if you would have bought here at that moving average, you would have gained 40 some percent. And, and guys, that's why I take a look at some of these simple moving averages. A lot of crypto YouTubers and stock YouTubers, people on X, they have all these complicated charts in it. And if you don't understand them, in my opinion, you shouldn't be basing an investment strategy off it. So I like to use the things that I feel anyone can simply use, whether it's the Fibonacci tools, the RSI, the buy sell signals I have on. You know, if you really <laughs> want to um, take your time or, um, you know, not waste your time with this stuff. You can put on buy sell signals on the weekly or monthly and just go based off that um, with a little bit of common sense, of course. But Apple has moved up good since the 100 week moving average. And you can see why we're in extreme greed right now. Um, as far as Amazon, now you might be noticing here, look at that bearish divergence. Now, 
we here it's just bearish because the price did move down here's bearish divergence and then eventually the price moved down from the peak so is there more to come possibly we want to see what this does if we're going to be making a higher low and the price maybe settles somewhere around the 50 week moving average I think it'd be better to look at the daily so you can see a little bit of weakness this gray line it's been the all-time high line from I think 21 22 it's been in love with it even after it's broken out of it so maybe uh, it gets back under again goes somewhere around the 200 day moving average around 175 Google Google you can see here it, it got to that all-time high line area it's been going sideways on the 50 and the 100 day moving average maybe it comes back down to the 200 there at 160 but uh, not a horrible area for Google and this is one we were talking about before when it hits that 200 day moving average or below tends to be good value and Google is a stock um, that has had a lower PE ratio than most as far as meta it's broken above the 1618 fib extension and you can see here got as high as 600 nice round number came back down testing the 20 day moving average and meta could even come down test the 100 it's liked the 100 as its deep value before maybe it only gets down to the 50 uh, but i think meta could be one that has a lot of room to run even up towards the 800 number so just something to keep an eye on with meta i think it's crazy how this stock has held up its strength more than the other stocks you know it's a it's a stock for uh, social media that old people use to complain about politics and post random pictures and uh, crap on Facebook so I I don't get it but um, you know meta meta looking pretty strong and lastly let's take a look at all seven of them why not we're here let's take a look at Tesla who and you can see Tesla forming a base at this channel had a little bit of a bounce off the 200 day moving average wick to it and the candle body stain at the 100 day moving average so let's take this off right here let's add on our buy sell signal so if you wanted it if you like tesla you know you could say all right it's here at this descending trend line that it's been in love with for a long time it's been moving upward in a channel it's at these moving averages support so if you like tesla as a trade investor i wouldn't hate taking a shot here personally um but if i were it but if i were being more uh risk averse or what should i say less if i want to take less risk i would be taking a look at this weekly to show a reversal for the buy signals to come back in we don't have that and it is possible it can just shoot down through here tesla can be pretty volatile so just do know there is a risk with that and at least waiting for a buy signal or the um stochastic R side of flip positive on the weekly good way to minimize risk and find good opportunities there so anyways hope you guys enjoyed the video i'll try to do a live stream tomorrow on all things crypto if there's any stocks cryptos you're interested in or uh, charts please comment below hope you all have a fantastic thursday take care